We're going to start with Adam Lentz. And Adam, so your question goes over the air. I'm going to take my headset off and kind of move it over towards you, okay? Good evening, Coach. It's good to see you tonight. Last time we talked to you, you were kind of on the other side of things. What's different this time, and what's changed since that game really to, to such a convincing victory? Well, you know, when it was Penn's Manor week one, I mean, they uh, so experienced. And, and we were, you know, we were coming out with a young team, and we uh, we had a lot of inexperience, and it showed. Um, we, we've tried to develop each week. We've just tried to get better. Um, our kids really have uh, believed in what we're trying to do each week offensively and defensively. And, um, um, it's just it's kind of a combination of uh, working hard and and uh, continuing to improve. Excellent. As the uh, as the season continues to progress, what goals and what, uh, what what are you looking forward to as you continue to develop this team? Well, you know, with so many young kids, we just want them to get better. Uh, we want them to understand the system. We want them to get better fundamentally, and we want to get better as a team. I, I'm a firm believer each week has to be your next goal. Um, you know, you can't talk about anything down the road at this point. Um, you know, we got a United team. We're going over to their place. They're going to be very tough. They're going to be physical. And um, so it's a matter of, for us, it's, you know, you enjoy it for a little bit, and then you get back to work Sunday night as coaches, and then Monday with the kids, and you just really try to, to uh, you just try to get better. I know it sounds cliched, but that's really what it is. Thanks, Coach. All right, Adam Lentz joining us from the IUP Communications Media Department. And Coach, you got off to a rockin' and rollin' start here today. Three possessions, three touchdowns, you're out of the gate 21 to nothing. It doesn't get any better than that. Blairsville went three and out on their first two possessions, and on the second one, uh, they lost nine yards on three plays. And on the third one, you almost had them stopped again, but they hit a couple of third and fourth down plays. But uh, what a start. Yeah, you know, and it was, um, it was, uh, you know, sorry, we got to turn back around, I guess. Uh, it really, I didn't think it was that easy at first. I mean, we had to grind. We had the big play at the beginning uh, with a nice long run. But, um, you know, they were physical early in the game. They, they made it difficult for us. And, uh, you know, once you get up on them, though, you can't feel comfortable because they have that passing attack. And, you know, the one before the half to make it 21-7. Fortunately, uh, we were able to go up 28-7. But, um, you know, you, you just never can relax with them. Jesse Lee on the first play from scrimmage, 47-yard run, set the tone and really picked up where he left off last week and where he's been. He's been in a really good spot the last three weeks, hasn't he? Uh, 168 yards rushing tonight. I think even if you go back to the Northern Cambria game, he, he ran the ball well too. And You know, it, it, it's he'll be the first to tell you it's a total team effort. Um, the guys up front have to get a push. We have to get into people, but he's, he's, he's seeing things very well. And um, obviously, once he gets going downhill, he's, he's a look to bring down. Your defense in the first half limited them to 92 yards. They continue to grow as a unit, don't they? Yeah, I thought we were pretty physical at times tonight, too. I would say of those 92 yards, maybe nearly half were on the touchdown pass in the first half. I, I could be wrong, but uh, they hit him over the middle, and he broke the tackle and then and scored. But um, you know, I think we were very well prepared for what they want to do. That's the key with them. You really have to rep the things they do, um, you know, especially in the passing game because they can be pretty effective. Even at the half, you're up 28 to seven, and I said it on the air during the broadcast. With the type of offense Blairsville runs, you really can't feel comfortable. So you had to be especially pleased. You force a three and out on their opening possession, and then you drive 84 yards on 12 plays to. For all intent and purposes, put the game away at 34 to seven. Well, I didn't feel that way, but I'm sure the people that aren't down on the sideline might feel that way because, again, like you said, you can't really relax with them. But I was a little upset we didn't handle the punt, so it goes to the 16, and you know you want to be a field position uh, you know, kind of guy and everything. So, but we did respond there. Uh, it, it's great coming out at the beginning of the third quarter and taking away their possession because that's why they deferred. So we were able to, to start off good defensively and then move the ball down. Most combined points in the series, dating back to 1923, breaking the record from 2004, which for the record wasn't a good night for the Wildcats uh, in a Blairsville victory. But 68 combined points, did you see that coming? No, I didn't. Um, you know, especially from their end of it, because they do, uh, they're very precise with the things they do, and I thought we covered well, but. I'll tell you what, the Shirley boy's got a nice arm and he throws the ball very, very well. It was, um, it's a challenge because we're trying to look at matchups and things like that. And he, you can tell he's well coached. He takes advantage of, of where you might have a weakness and he finds that guy. So, Coach, uh, on the downside, John Ireland uh, lost uh, for next week. 
the explanation of, and because of his second infraction in the game, was that the uh, reason for the ejection? Yeah, yeah, you know, it's disappointing. It, it, it's, I don't know. He was getting the business on the opening kickoff, and he responds, which, you know, you, everybody tells your kids, don't initiate, don't retaliate. Well, they both did, and then I, I understand the second unsportsmanlike gets a kid thrown out, but I, I really... I don't know. I don't. I, I don't like anything with showboating, but I think it was just an excited kid going in the end zone. But now he pays the price. And yeah. I, I feel bad. He's a senior. One, one less game he's going to have to be a part of. Yep, yeah, that is uh, true. Coach, yeah. also a special night. We have something special for you. We're going to have you here in your headset in a, in a second. But the 1985 team. 30th anniversary, all in all, it's been a tradition here at Homer Center for several years now. I thought it worked out very well, and we ended up with a great night after a rainy day. Yeah, you know what, those guys, this is four years in a row now, and first class guys, I mean, I can tell you when, when I played against them, um, I, I didn't want to, I didn't like it, you know, it was your, your button heads, but then when guys get older and they get, they get involved in life and you get a greater appreciation uh, for things. Um, it was a good group of guys, and you can tell we're very, very excited to be here, and I'm, I'm glad we were able to give them some good news. And speaking of button heads, um, we had Coach Faust on different clips throughout our broadcast tonight, and you told me yesterday when I asked you at the team dinner if you had to tackle Matt Finotti, and you said no, you were only an offensive player, right? <laughs> That's right. Yeah. But uh, Rick Faust had something to say that I thought would play for you in this manner on our post-game show, and uh, see if it rings a bell, so to speak. Michael? I know where this is going. You obviously can't hear this, but I can't either. You can't hear it? No. You're not getting that? No. And he just laughed. He said, no, I was just on the offensive side, fortunately, so what happens if Matt yeah. went on? Slight edge, yeah. <laughs> Slight edge, coach. You agree with well, that? Well, let me tell you the story about what he's talking about, because I'm I, I don't shy away from stuff. It was the opening kickoff, and uh, <laughs> we returned it to our sideline, and I had a pretty good return. I, probably one of the better ones I had in the season. And I got near the sideline. I went to cut back in because I saw a guy kind of flying, and I could I can still hear my dad, get out, get out. Well, I turned to go back in, and it was Jimmy Lewis, who wasn't here tonight, but I remember, I knew that night who it was, and I, I did get popped. I got popped real good, and, uh, you know, I, I, I didn't come back. I didn't come back. It was one of those deals. Short night, that, Coach. Short night. Yeah, long night for the Rams, uh, short night for me. <laughs> Maybe Jimmy Lewis was worried about retribution tonight. <laughs> I don't think so. I mean, I put a lot of weight on, but, I, <laughs> but uh, you know what? It's just um, I'm proud to be here, and you know, I was part of a great tradition as a player and assistant. The Laurel Valley, and I'm really, really proud to be here and try to extend a tradition of what um, some of these guys here have been part of for so many years. School District's proud to have you, Coach. Congratulations on a big victory here tonight over Blairsville. We'll talk to you next week at Mendeal Field. Thank you, guys. Head Coach Greg Page of the